Greetings and welcome to the lecture on the biosafety officer. In this lecture, I will introduce you to the roles and responsibilities of a biosafety officer. The biosafety officer represents the human component of the biosafety system of an organization. As a biosafety officer, you are expected to be cognizant of, uphold and implement the principles, policies of the organization within the framework of biorisk management. You should be aware of the key concepts associated with biological systems and should be cognizant of biosafety guidelines, laws and practices. Now in this particular module, I will delve into the roles and responsibilities of a biosafety officer and also introduce you to what is known as the culture of biosafety within an organization. The objectives of this module are to introduce you to the culture of biosafety, firstly, to introduce you to what is termed as compliance and to give you an overview of the roles and responsibilities of a biosafety officer or a biorisk manager. Upon completion of this module, you should be able to describe the roles and responsibilities of the biosafety officer, provide an overview of the guidelines which are the driving principles of biosafety, develop the first component of your biosafety manual, which is the roles and responsibilities of a biosafety officer, and apply what you have learned to inculcate a culture of biosafety at your respective institutions. Now, as an exercise, I want you to develop a guideline on the roles and responsibilities of a biosafety officer. Do this from the perspective of establishing your career as a biosafety officer or as a biorisk manager. Define your roles and responsibilities in your book and I will delve into these roles and responsibilities as we progress with this lecture. The first concept which I want to introduce you is to the word culture of biosafety. And I have taken this paragraph from Texas Agricultural and Mechanical University which defines culture and what exactly is culture. A culture is a way of life of a group of people. The behavior, beliefs, values and symbols that they accept generally without thinking about them and that are passed along by communication and imitation from one generation to the next. Now what you need to inculcate in your organization is the culture of biosafety and this involves multiple steps which focus on acculturation and this leads to a change in the behavior, a change in the system of beliefs, values and symbols and these Changes have to be done subconsciously or without thinking. And these changes are passed on from one generation of biosafety officers to the other or along the hierarchy via communication and via imitation. This is why it's always good to practice all what you preach so that your peers and your junior officers learn from you by imitation. So culture is basically defined by the Texas A&M paragraph is based on behavior, beliefs, values and symbols, all of which are elements of biosafety management. I would also like to quote from Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi who says, if we could change ourselves, the tendencies in the world would also change as a man or woman changes his or her own nature. So does the attitude of the world change towards him, her and we need not wait to see what others do. What this essentially means is that change begins with you. So as a biosafety officer, you become the role model for the institution. The next factor which I want to introduce you is what is known as the culture of compliance. The culture of compliance means confirming to a rule such as a specification, policy, standard or law. And regulatory compliance describes the goal that organizations aspire to achieve in their efforts to ensure that they are aware of and take steps to comply with relevant laws and regulations. 
So within the organization, as you have learned in administrative controls, we have external controls as well as internal controls. Regulatory compliance pertains to external controls. You must comply with certain laws and regulations. And you also have internal compliance, which complies with your vision and mission statement and your quality policies. If you are working at an organization, you can undertake this simple exercise. What does my organization comply with? And you try and answer this question by referencing your policy statements at your respective organization. Does your organization comply with international laws, national laws, guidelines, codes of ethics, and so on and so forth. And this will give you an idea of the competency of your organization in terms of compliance. Organizations ensure that they are compliant via a process of awareness, action, and introspection. So this essentially translates to planning, doing, checking, and acting. And this all translates to the process of continuous quality improvement. Assuming that you are a biosafety officer who has just joined an organization, you will be asking yourself, where do I begin? And you begin by looking at your policy. Look at your vision and mission statement of the organization and ensure that all your vision and mission statements are incorporated into your biosafety policy. You also have to look at the context of the law and ensure that your biosafety policies are within the scope of existing laws. You also have to look at CSR or corporate social responsibility as adherence to biosafety is a very important element of CSR. And you need to look at agents of change in the organization or people who are the key to implementing change in the organization. And these people may be located at the higher management, the intermediate management, or maybe even at the laboratory level. And you identify these personnel and you ensure that they receive support and encouragement in order to foster change within the organization. So how do we foster change? I have created a scenario for you and we will discuss this briefly. So the Biosafety Act has been amended and every research institution involved with biological research is now required to employ a certified BSO. This is what the law states. You have been newly appointed by a specific organization which does not practice bio-risk management because the management perceives bio-risk management as a financial burden. So in this situation, how will you address the change as a newly appointed BSO? So as a newly appointed BSO, you will face many challenges which are similar to this scenario. And the way you do it is by generating awareness. You cannot impose regulations on people without creating awareness. So the first factor or the first element which you need to look at is awareness. Once you create awareness, you must communicate this across the organization. And this communication can be done via training. And once you implement training, you have completed the cycle. So everything begins with awareness. Make your top management aware of the concepts associated with bio-risk management. Once they are aware, you communicate this across the organization. And you use training to implement this policies across the organization. This is how you can foster change at your organization, even under difficult circumstances.
we now move on into the roles and responsibilities of a biosafety officer or a biorisk manager i have used these terms interchangeably because some of the organizations may employ a biosafety officer some may employ a biorisk manager or a facility manager as the case may be and we will look at the roles and responsibilities of the individual who is employed for this particular task now the word responsibility carries a lot of weight so the word responsibility refers to the state or fact of having a duty to deal with something or having control over someone i have highlighted the word duty to deal the second aspect involves accountability so as a biorisk manager you must be accountable and the first aspect of accountability is basically documentation the third aspect involves the empowerment of the biosafety officer the top management must grant independence and authorization to bi the biosafety officer in fact this point has been highlighted in the iso 35001 which highlights the role of the biosafety officer in terms of authority and independence these are the roles which are expected of a biosafety officer so if you are planning to undertake a career in biosafety management and transform your career path into that of a biosafety officer these are some of the roles which you are expected to undertake and please be aware that this must be inculcated over a period of time as there are complex elements involved in your role so the first role is to understand the basic principles of microbiology and cell biology so for instance if you are faced with this scenario in which case a principal investigator at your institute or laboratory intends culturing a pathogen in the general microbiology laboratory you should be able to undertake a risk assessment develop a questionnaire and carry out the proper risk mitigation and performance assessment the second aspect involves awareness of the basic principles of genetic engineering and biotechnology modern molecular biology molecular genetics and genetic engineering have basically enhanced biological agents you can uh, create novel functions or grant a gain of function or incorporate a gain of function experiment in your laboratory and in improve or increase the efficacy of a biological agent in terms of its host range or in terms of its infectious potential and this is why you must be aware of the basic principles of genetic engineering and biotechnology you should also be able to understand the risks associated with working with biological agents and be aware of other hazards and associated risks this extends to risks associated with chemicals used in the laboratory such as mutagens as well as radioactive compounds or other biological or chemical hazards so you must reflect on this question which has been covered in the previous week what is a biological agent and how are biological agents classified if you can recall this you have basically understood biorisk management and your role as a biosafety officer or a, or a biorisk manager for instance i will create or depict under scenario 6 of the 10 researchers working within your facility and they have been working with biological agent x have been diagnosed with an infection the biological agent in question is associated with the environment so you find this biological agent in the lab as well as in the environment external to the lab how will you assess the likelihood that the researchers were infected with the laboratory biological agent on the premises itself could they have been infected prior to commencing their research work with agent x so this is a question which you must address as a biorisk manager and this shows 
whether you understand the concept of infection. The fourth role is to understand the role of the occupational health and safety provider. So you should work along with the doctors and medical personnel who are associated with health and safety at your respective organization. The biosafety officer must also be aware of what are termed as human factors. Each human being has his own unique characteristics and these characteristics must be addressed by a biosafety officer. This requires a certain amount of intuition and may also require inputs from professionals in behavior management. The sixth role is to understand the concept of containment and its limitations. As you are aware by now, there is always a residual risk after implementing all the controls and you should be able to understand the types of containment and you should be aware of both primary and secondary containment. Role number seven is a very important role as it pertains to risk assessment. As a biosafety officer, you should be able to assess a risk using a questionnaire and propose specific controls to mitigate that risk. A biosafety officer should also be acutely aware of environmental safety and understand the risks posed by biological agents to the environment, especially in the case of zoonotic agents as well as genetically modified organisms which may have a direct impact on the environment. Expert help will be needed as a biosafety officer may not be aware of many of the aspects of genetic engineering which requires the attention or the input from an expert in the field. The ninth role is basically related to the engineering controls and although a biosafety officer may be qualified as a biologist, he or she must be aware of engineering controls in terms of the air conditioning as well as the construction and the basic redesign of the facility. You will need this skill because under some circumstances you may have to communicate with an engineer or an architect when it comes down to developing a new facility or redesigning an existing facility. So this is a scenario which you look at again. So your employer has decided to build, plan, operate and lease a biological safety tree laboratory for the purpose of an animal containment. So as a BSO, you have to represent the company during meetings with the engineering consultants and local authorities. These are some of the questions which you should think about. What are the pertinent questions that you will post to the engineering consultant? How will you address the cons concerns of the local authorities with response to regulation? And are these the responsibilities of the BSO? Obviously, these two are. You should be aware of elements of engineering design as well as the legal aspects associated with your local laws. The tenth role of a biosafety officer is understanding equipment. As we have seen earlier, we have multiple sets of equipment in the laboratory which include the biological safety cabinets, centrifuges, autoclaves, etc. So as a biosafety officer, you must be aware of the operation of all of this equipment so that you can train others with respect to their usage. So the key concepts with regard to instrumentation are the choice of the instrument, the correct use, using the appropriate administrative control in the form of an SOP, the installation of the equipment, validation, certification and maintenance. These are some of the things which most of us who are involved in biosafety are constantly involved in. So we have to maintain files for each of these particular parameters with regard to instrumentation. The eleventh role is to understand and apply good microbiological techniques. Now most of us who are in the biology field or 
trained as microbiologists are aware of good microbiological techniques. As a biosafety officer, you must be aware of these good microbiological techniques which include aseptic working conditions as well as sterilization and decontamination. Your twelfth role is to advise on appropriate types of PPE which we have covered in the lecture on PPEs and the choice of PPE of course is based on risk assessment. You should be able to describe the most important elements of infection, control, disinfection, decontamination and sterilization and the efficiency of all of these methods. For instance, if your laboratory runs out of a specific disinfectant and decides to change to another disinfectant which is really readily available or available at a lower cost as a BSO, you should be able to make a decision with regard to the efficacy of that particular disinfectant and also develop a protocol which incorporates what is termed as contact time. Role number 14 involves the development and implementation of a biological waste management plan which includes validation. I have focused on this in earlier lectures on waste disposal and as a biosafety officer you should be aware of the principles of segregation, of staging, transport and incineration or autoclaving of waste as the case might be and all of these must be incorporated within the scope of a plan. The 15th role is to develop contingency plans. So you should be aware of emergencies which may occur at your facility and you should be aware of these and preempt them and develop the contingency plan. This may include chemical spills, biological spills as well as fire and electrical issues at your respective facility. The 16th role is to understand the methods of accident and investi incident investigation. This implies that you should be able to refer to document, trace the source of the accident or incident and mitigate future accidents and incidents by the application of controls. So a BSO is also an investigator. As a BSO, you are the backbone of the organization and you must develop and support the implementation of biosafety and biosecurity programs across the organization. You must also understand, and I have highlighted this in earlier lectures, the interrelatedness between different controls as well as the human elements involved in implementation of biosafety at your respective organization. The 18th role is to have a sufficient knowledge on training principles. Now you may ask me what do I do when I join an organization and the answer is begin with training. Train, train and train until you become perfect so that you can train others and as the saying goes you teach best what you most need to learn. This is from Richard Bach. You train others and in the process you train yourself. You overcome your imperfections only by a training. So you should start somewhere as a biosafety officer and you start with training. The 19th role is to be able to transfer information clearly and convincingly to an audience including management, laboratory workers and external parties. Now as a BSO, you have to maintain neutrality within an organization. Neutrality involves separating your emotional aspects of your life with the professional aspects. So be a professional in an organization. Do not maintain any kind of bias towards any individual and look at every individual objectively as they are all functional components in an organization. You should also understand sensitivities of people based on local cultures 
as well as the behavioral aspects as different cultures may have different approaches towards safety or risk management. The 20th role is to demonstrate the ability to carry out relevant audits and inspections. Audits and inspections are part and parcel of your life as a biorisk manager and you should be able to look at audits in terms of the records and traceability, identify non-conformities and what are known as areas for improvement. This is part of the process of continuous quality improvement. Role number 21 is to be aware of transport security and transport safety. You should be aware of the regulation with respect to the shipment and handling of samples across national and international boundaries. Role number 22 is to understand the national and international regulatory frameworks. As we have seen in this particular MOC, there are a range of guidelines from the World Health Organization and from other organizations. And as a biosafety officer, you must be aware of all these guidelines as well as the national and international laws to which your country adheres to. The role number 23 focuses on bioethical issues. So bioethical issues may consider human ethics and animal ethics. So if you are conducting experiments involving animals, you must obtain approval from an animal ethics committee. And this must be communicated to your research team. Now as a biorisk manager, at a specific facility, you must ensure that the researchers comply with bioethical issues and ensure that adequate training, awareness and documentation is maintained with regard to bioethics. The 24th role focuses on more complex issues and higher risk environment. For instance, if you are working with animals, insects, plants or prions, you may be required to comply with specific national regulations pertaining to genetic engineering or quarantine. If you are working in a bioprocessing facility, for instance, production of vaccines, you will be governed by different laws and regulations with regard to processing. If you are working with GMP or good manufacturing practices in a pharmaceutical facility, you are governed by another set of regulations. Clinical diagnostic activities may be governed by specific regulations and gene therapy activities may in turn be governed by another set of regulations. So as a biosafety officer, you must be aware of different regulations which may come into force from time to time. And this requires constant upgradation of your skills as a biosafety officer. The 25th role is very important and it pertains to continuous professional development. As a biosafety officer, your life is a living document. You are basically evolving at all times. You are evolving as you face new circumstances and new challenges and you are evolving as you adapt to new regulations. Now as a biosafety officer, you must maintain continuous professional development in your respective organization and you become the standard for everyone else to adopt. We have now come to the end of this particular module and I would like to highlight the role of the biosafety officer as many of you may want or desire to undertake a career as a biosafety officer. A biosafety officer is basically an administrator who has a sound knowledge of biological processes is aware of guidelines and regulations, has a working knowledge of engineering controls and PPEs. He or she is able to develop and implement training programs and he or she must be amenable to change. Now, as you can see from this lecture, the role of a biosafety officer or biorisk manager is not a very simple one. You must be constantly aware of many factors which 
can compromise safety at your respective laboratory. Awareness must be translated into implementation via communication as well as training. That brings us to the end of this particular module on the roles and responsibilities of a biosafety officer. I wish you all the best in your career and your developmental path as a biosafety officer. If you need any further information, please post a forum comment and I will respond to your comments. Thank you very much for watching this module. Thank you.